Perhaps one of the most overlooked and certainly under-addressed issues within criminal justice is the impact that the system has on victims. And nowhere is this more true than in rape trials. And somebody knows a tremendous amount about this through her research is Professor Elizabeth MacDonald from UC's Law School and also a member of our criminal justice team. Why did you do this particular study? It's such an enormous piece of work, but why was it so important? Kia ora, Jared. Good to talk to you about this. I've been working in this area a, a long time, so I'm a criminal lawyer, um, also involved in the law of evidence. But one of the things that kind of puts those two pieces of work together really is the prosecution of offences, and particularly the prosecution of sexual offences I was interested in, have been for a long time. And one of the things that I noticed was when complainants were asked about their experiences, adult complainants in rape cases this is, they were saying very similar things um, from when, when they were talked to in, as part of the rape study back in 1983, when the Ministry of Women's Affairs did some work in 2009, they were saying very similar things about their experience. They would never advise anyone to go to court or to make a complaint about rape. And obviously this is a massive flaw in the system. If victims can't come forward, then we've got huge problems. Well, yes, and, and even kind of more concerning and more of an indictment, people working within the system would say that as well. You know, judges, police officers, even defence counsel would say, I'd never advise a member of my family. And that's, that's really unpalatable. So, and although there's been a lot of work done asking people about their experiences, I want to do a piece of work that actually went, sort of looked at actual cases and tried to observe, like, what's going on? What's going on in the questioning process in particular? Because I talk about in the book reform-resistant questioning, and that's not just cross-examination. I mean, complainants do report that as being pretty terrible, but any kind of interaction in the courtroom, and where was the sort of levels of distress really apparent, and did they need to occur? So what's the impact of this research? What do you hope happens out of this, Elizabeth? Well, there's 53 recommendations, <laughs> and these are all recommendations that actually could uh, be implemented in the current adversarial trial process. Okay, so, so let's look at that. So because there are, you know, there's a, a, a real tension here, isn't there? Or a, a believed tension anyway, um, between the rights of the victims and the rights of the defendant to have a fair trial. But what are the uncontroversial things? You know, what are the, some of the uncontroversial things that we could tackle, you know, immediately? Um, well, one of them could just be implementing the law as it currently exists. <laughs> um, so we have is this, really around, is this around mocking and sort of belittling of victims? Well, one of the things we noticed in the pilot cases were that judges were more willing to intervene in questioning at various points. What we did notice, however, is that those points didn't include where there was a particular tone of belittling or mocking or putting the complainant yeah. down, making her feeling embarrassed or fokama. The, the ministry was of the view that judges should be intervening on the grounds of tone or manner and weren't. And they are recommending a specific amendment to make sure that that's highlighted and written in the legislation so it's used more often. Um, some of the structural things that do have a significant impact is, um, for example, sentence length. At the moment, the maximum penalty for sexual violation by rape is 20 years. So a, an eight-year starting point, which is pretty high. Um, but there's no other real option if they want resolution. So one of the things, obviously, that, that is being talked about is some alternative kind of dispute resolution, if you like, whether that's restorative justice or mediation. So because those people might want acknowledgement of the harm, sort of an undertaking, maybe they wouldn't do it to someone else, yeah. but not necessarily either going through yeah. the trial process or having someone have to face that kind of level of imprisonment. Yeah. So you've got 53 recommendations, but one thing that is abundantly clear is that change needs to happen. Are we going to see that change? Of course, the wheels of the legislative process move very, very slowly. I think what you're seeing, though, is a will to change, um, certainly under the current government, a, a quite a strong will to make things different. There's been money made available for training and development programs for judges and for council. Uh, there's certainly, I think, a very heightened public awareness of some of the difficulties around uh, what it's like to report rape. Um, and of course it would be nice generally for the rates of sexual offending to drop regardless of what happens in the trial process. And uh, I know lots of people are working on that. Cool. Listen, thank you so much, Elizabeth. It's always really good to talk.